Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Crystal and this is the Best of Both Worlds campaign. Not quite the Best of Both Worlds that we all know and love because, if in case you didn't watch the last episode, and if you didn't watch the last episode you should go and watch the last episode because it explains much of the current circumstance. But the long and the short of it is that I deleted save because I am a silly boy. And uh, what that means is we are back in time, like uh, almost exactly a year. About four days, five, six days less than a year. And the world is not quite as you know it. I replayed the campaign just for you. And uh, it is now more or less where it was about a year before the end. I decided I'm going to replay on camera the actual war part. Because, uh, you know, war's fun and all that. And, uh, yeah, other than that, things are mostly as they were. The Soviets have just declared war on Finland, who was a member of the Anti-Soviet Pact, which means the members of the Anti-Soviet Pact, namely us, Turkey and Finland, are going to go to war with them, as per last time. Turkey wants to join Middle Europa, absolutely Turkey. So Turkey is in, Finland is in, the Balkans and Hungary. Hungary is dubiously part of the Balkans, I believe. And uh, so we'll say the Balkans and Hungary. And Italy are our puppets. Spain actually has fallen to the Allies and been split between Democratic Spain in the East <laughs> and uh, Communist Spain in the West, one of which is part of the Allies. Japan fell to the Allies and then the Soviets immediately declared war on them. And even though they failed to the Allies, they kept a bunch of their Chinese puppets. It's a whole, it's a whole thing, man. Just watch the previous video. <laughs> anyway, who will actually invite to our faction? Japan would actually join our faction right now. That's just too good, isn't it? I mean, we should do that. <laughs> we should do that. that will, they'll help us distract the Soviets, basically. Sure. Japan, welcome to the faction. No declaring war on anyone funky. If you go to war with the Allies early, I'll be peeved. Um, who else will join the faction? Venezuela will join the faction. Absolutely. You'll be lovely for attacking the Allies' chromium. Welcome. To the faction. Lovely. That's so not chromium. I mean aluminium, of course. Venezuela has quite a few men. It's quite late. It's 1933. To review the situation here at the beginning of the episode, we have 232 military factories, 95 naval dockyards. Oh, right. And if you didn't watch the previous one, uh, in the previous campaign, or rather the first half of this campaign, I buffed France, UK, and Soviets. In this one, we've also max buffed the United States. Uh, we have to take a focus. Dockyard facilities doesn't seem that worth it. And two research bonuses for Land Doctrine would be a lot more useful if we weren't already 50% of the way through the final Land Doctrine. I should have taken it earlier, but there was important things to be done. We had to do rekindle Imperial Sentiment. Right, yeah, so I actually annexed Hungary and Czechoslovakia and, Czechoslovakia and um, Austria, all with one focus. Uh, well, two focuses. One to make Austria-Hungary reunify and one to make Anschluss happen. That was very useful. Um, we've just finished Rhineland, which means we have our lovely fort building speed modifier. Look at that. That's outrageous. <laughs> We're getting a very nice bonus to our construction speed there. And we do have... Oh, that's interesting. Our, uh... Where's my... Where's my bonus from, uh... Westwall? Oh, no, it gives you available as political advisor. It doesn't actually just give you the bonus. I forgot about that. We're going to want to buy this guy, but not next, because next we absolutely need to get extensive conscription, because manpower, as ever, is a horrendous problem for us. We will focus on probably air production, or maybe naval production, honestly, just for fun. We have a big enough air force. I mean, not big enough, but sure. Let's do naval production. We've got 45... Do I have two music play sets of music playing right now? I'm a fool. There we go. That should be a bit better. <laughs> okay, we have a pretty good navy. We've got 12 battleships, 14 heavy cruisers, 3 cruisers, 12 destroyers, and 4 aircraft carriers. With one aircraft carrier sitting in reserve. They are all carrier 2s right now, but it will not be this way for long. We are about to get 2 more battleships, super heavy Mark II battleships, as well as a level 3 carrier we are researching level four carriers we're actually not okay we might get on that pretty soon it's approaching that time some more prince eugen's coming out you should go to the reserve and then we'll deal with you from there 
Excellent. They've got their wings set up. I kept it relatively balanced this time. Oh, it's actually not in the same port. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay, so Soviets, we're at war with you, yes? We should be. Yes, this isn't just red because they're the Soviets. We are indeed at war with them. And how many days until the United States, those warmongers, go to war with us? About 45. We don't have the defenses I would like to have over here to hold them back. Uh, but manpower basically means we basically can't get the defenses over here that I would like to have. Um, so we'll spread these guys out a touch. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I've pulled all my men off the port defenses. I'm loath to use puppet divisions to actually hold fronts. Um, but we may find ourselves forced to. We do have a nice tank army. We've got 10 of these 40 width medium tank monstrosities without some of the the trimmings that perhaps they could do with. In fact, now I think about it, we should probably chuck the signal companies in there right now. Let's do that. We will have the support equipment surplus. We've got great equipment surpluses. Look at this ridiculousness. We also have a sizable air force at our disposal. 7,000-ish fighters. I'm just leaving them all here because I want to, uh, you know, easily organize them. We don't have the manpower to deploy more, deploy more right now. They want to join us against the Soviet Union? Absolutely. Go ahead and join. We will call all our puppets. We don't want to do any gamey stuff about that. Okay, the Soviet Union has... Let's take a look at them. About 550 divisions. Quite a lot of factories. 3 million manpower is not what I would expect, but they're only extensive conscription. In terms of... Uh, casualties, obviously. Barely started. We've taken no casualties so far. So... Without further ado, let's get right into the war. We've got 400 nav bombers ready to rain fire down on anyone that dares oppose my glorious surface raiding fleet, which will decimate the five ships here. We should, well, should we try and hold Finland? Like, Do we send troops? We sent volunteers to Finland, but they still signed the freaking peace <laughs> where they lose land. My volunteers are just about to start bulldozing through and take Leningrad, but sadly that was not to be. We could send some crack German divisions and try and hold this set of provinces here. One, two, three. Hmm. Four, five. Well, you'd have to hold this one as well because it's a little... Isthmus there. So it still counts an Isthmus when it's the two lakes? Probably not. One, two, three, four, eight provinces. We could try. But I think we would fail. So Finland, you will be avenged. But we are not going to come and defend you just now. We will. Yeah, okay. What we will do, Finland, I'm not going to abandon you completely. We will send our finest pilots to do some serious damage to the Soviets. They will, they will take Finland, but they will take it with losses. All our puppets, of course, join. Immediate combat between some Italian subs. Right, yes, yeah, so of course, the Italians kept their fleet. So there's a substantial Italian surface fleet down here, which will basically probably suicide against France when the war first breaks out. But uh, still, you know, better than nothing. Better than nothing. We have three pockets of reserves ready to be deployed wherever the Soviets appear to push first. And obviously, we're just going to uh, bulldoze them out of here to establish the front line as we would like to see it. Let's get the rest of the Air Force in position. How long are you? Let's just let them deploy all the way over there. The reason the save got deleted, by the way, is because the game is now on SSD, which does make it run a little bit better. The limiting factor is usually CPU, but the SSD does help, especially with getting those saves done nice and quick. So we should see a slight uptick in performance, which is always nice. Let's get those out there. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Our allies will move their planes as we fill the air bases, or at least they should. So we're not going to be concerned about where other planes are already deployed. I don't know if we're going to be able to get air superiority against the Soviets. We're going to start off with uh, with mixed missions. We'll see how that works. Um, I think it will. I think it will work quite well. Okay, there we go. Already pushed them there. Tanks can pull back to here. And let's split the medium tank deployment a bit. And split these a bit. 
just to be ready to respond wherever the main Soviet offensive comes first. I've deployed 100% of my tanks against the Soviets. We're not interested in doing a war of movement against France right at the beginning. Uh, we're in this for the long, challenging game. They want to call us against Mongolia. Yes, I accept. So if Japan will call Turkey in, that's fine. So this is all one war, of course. The What, what is the war, technically? This is the Mongolian-German war. Excellent. And the German-Soviet war. But these should merge. I think. I think. Why, why haven't these merged already? Not sure. I think they will at some point. We can do war propaganda against Mongolia. Not really necessary. Emergency factory construction. Really not necessary. Okay. Tech-wise, obviously, we're, you know, living life. We're about to get the final levels of tech. We've got great extraction tech. We are currently importing from the US, which, you know, is bad, but uh, there's not much we can do about it. Why has our steel production suddenly got a lot better? I have a guess. Is it because our... This finished and moved on to something else? No. That's interesting. We're going to build four level threes, and then all of the current level twos can become, become reserves. There's quite a few British troops there. I really want to be able to take Denmark fast so we can close the Danish belts. You should be on engage and all that. Yeah, cool. Just, just actually, just find their fleet and destroy it. There it is. Okay, just annihilate this fleet for me, would you? How many super heavy battleships do we actually have? One, two, three. Just five, but still pretty good, including the Grotz von Berlichtgen, which is the pride of the ship. I can't pronounce that, so you're going to be something else. This is the Christo. Glorious. The pride of the fleet. The super heavy battleship Mark II. Bring low our Soviet foes. Bring great glory to our people and all that good stuff. We need some more decryption. I can't see the Soviets. Uh, do we have any recon in our infantry? We actually don't. I should chuck recon companies in here. Can we afford that? Everything about manpower? Yeah, do it. We'll put recon in. We do have the templates, very standard, you know, simple 20 width, 40 width light, 40 width medium, 40 width infantry, and military police. Very simple. If I wanted to add something else in here, we could put uh, logistics if we find it helpful, or maybe signal company but i just don't think it's necessary if the soviet air looks like it's going to cause a real problem we will throw in some um some anti-air into the infantry but we haven't really of course had much contact with the enemy in uh, in that regard yet so we will see with uh, whether rather that becomes necessary they are now fighting us down here how is this many planes are this many planes causing me a problem is your mission efficiency getting tanked by something yes get out of my air base romania you should be able to demand uh fighters as well by the way you can demand troops why can't you demand control of planes that would be quite cool actually i said i should uh i said sh sh yeah. good lord i can't speak i should suggest that to the developers that would be a very cool change uh anything else we actually don't have as many cas as i would like really uh, let's send some cas over here some here obviously the main push is usually in the south and on warsaw venezuela wants to send us expeditionary forces absolutely i think i saw in a dev diary by the way you're going to be able to Request expeditionary forces. That's gonna be real cool. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, hello. A bunch more divisions from Romania. Romania, the some of the Romanian tanks, not bad. So I've been integrating them into my uh, my armies here. In fact, let's send all of these guys over here. Ah, yes, and you have the wrong symbol. I'm no longer using the normal red. My tanks are the horses. The Romanian tanks are the little Crimean thing. Good. Fresh infantry. We'll just use it to beef out port defenses. I'm concerned. Legitimately concerned about joint Anglo United States naval invasions. Because they can be beefy. It's 1943. They've got darn fine. Why do you guys want to join wars? I thought you were already called into my, my wars. I probably should have accepted those, shouldn't I? Never mind. <laughs> are you at war with these guys right now? Yes. We are obviously going to lose all this land. Um, in the beginning, that will hurt us. 
Konigsberg had a lot of our dockyards in. The Prince Eugen is going to cause problems. We also don't have the manpower to deploy these two right now, which is unfortunate. But uh, the only way I could quickly generate manpower would be by, delete by deleting more of these guys. And I'm loath to do that. But I think I will do it because we want those guys to deploy. Okay. Well, as the Soviets advance on our front, let's speed up time a bit here. I'm assuming we're just going to absolutely decimate them at sea. Should be some easy victories. Yeah, just, just annihilating them there. Good. Okay, there is a new carrier. Give me that Otto Lindenthal I'm going to go with. We will merge it in with this guy. Trying to retreat from a fight up here. Should be easy enough. Just merge up, you two. In fact, if I put them both on missions, can you then merge them? Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then turn it off, toggle it off. Soviet Union called Mongolia in. That might have merged the wars, actually. Yep, there it is. It's now officially the Soviet-German War. We've taken no casualties. They've taken 33,000. Obvi obviously, over in the east, some Soviet medium tank divisions. It's a little worrying, but they do suck. So there's that. We have not done this mistake number one there will be many more now we could do with some fighter cover over the baltic to help prevent their surface ships doing huge damage to our sorry their their land-based planes doing too huge damage to our carriers as you can see they really hurt your organization they are seriously nerfing the ability of land... Oh, hello. Hello. Okay, no. Forget talking about patch changes. This is a threat and a half. We do have nice stats on our 400 wits, but... Sorry, our 400 wits. Our 40 wits, but that is... Uh, that is concerning. But this this is where I thrive. Oh, yes. Okay. And uh, I will drop a save right here. So consider this a challenge. The United States is about to go to war with you. The Soviets are at war with you. They have max buffs. You will need all the DLCs. Uh, Christo challenge. You will need all the DLCs and the same mod setup as me to be able to run this save properly. Uh, but I will post the number of DLCs, those, those DLCs and the mod setup in a comment. And I will also upload that save. If you want to try and play along with me, do download the save and, uh, and see if you can, if you can manage think we're going to be able to manage but we're going to need to uh, need to do some some funky things I'd say in order to be able to, uh, to pull this off no not you you guys just strictly deploy in here so we can get a bit closer to the action they are definitely gonna punch through here probably before I have a chance to get anyone to respond so let's, let's deploy some tanks ready to force them back again I knew, you know, this is a problem with 40 wits. You can't spread out as evenly along the line. Uh, you know, you've got two, 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 and then ones. Uh, whereas if these were 40 wits, sorry, if these were 20 wits, it'd be a lot more evenly spread. We could get some more planes in the sky, uh, here especially, but that's a long way from where I really want them to be active. Here would probably work better. We'll put them on just air superiority. They're still fighting us in the Balkans with ooh, 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 quite a serious number. So we're going to uh, step up our game down there. We do have some tack bomber wings still in play, which actually I could deploy to that fight quite effectively. There goes the Manchuko people capitulating. Let's bring a bunch of these guys down here. Just, just a, a whole lot of them down here and absolutely smash them out of the Balkans. That seems good. Then the biggest threats will be here probably. So deploying these guys just along that little bit of the river there seems prudent to me. Okay, tanks arriving in time on that river across from Bessarabia. So we should be able to hold there okay. I don't know why this bug happens when you when you inherit countries sometimes just changes the color. Weird. Okay, 200 casts without a job. Let's 
try and fly them from here, maybe? We could also, of course, improve... They should be in range of these fights, at least. Uh, yeah, there we go. Mm, could do with more fighter cover over here. How about some of you switch? Because this doesn't seem to be at all contested yet. Another great naval victory. Any... Yeah, two enemy boats left. So, look at those XP levels already getting up there on those carriers. Everyone else basically not engaging, just because our carriers are doing all the work. We will remove the Graf Zeppelin. I believe the first carrier I ever built. You, good sir, can go now to your rest until a carrier falls. And I will call on you again at that point. Rest of you, hunt down the remaining Soviet uh, boats. We will make short work of them. In just a few days, God, we make so such little political power. We, uh, I didn't hang the Nazi leadership because I wanted to, it to be reinstated so I could get this guy, but it, I never got the event to reinstate Nazi leadership. Is it? Is it a uh, a focus? And I'm just silly. I don't see it. Hmm. Anyway, not a big deal. We're holding here fine now that we've moved our glorious tank divisions with their 1,000 defense and 700 attack into the breach. Excellent, excellent news. Our division commanders, by the way, Rommel has been promoted to Field Marshal and is leading Guderian and Manstein. Manstein has been given the light and um, foreign tank divisions, whereas Guderian is leading our primary 40 width tank force going pretty well so far with that setup we'll see if we want to tweak it later let's bring, the, bring these tanks a bit closer to the front so when they're needed they can respond more swiftly of course all forces trained by our puppets are being swiftly requisitioned and put to the coastal defenses ready for a huge allied push which i am anticipating that is very loud <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm concerned by the numbers up here. So I'm going to send half of the panzers up there. We have almost no military police, but I don't suspect that's likely to be an issue in the immediate future. Uh, the, the, obviously, the manpower is just utterly unsustainable on that front right now. I could cancel. Yeah, I should. Let's cancel this to get the, the, uh, the political power instead. I should have done that earlier, really. I think we can handle speed three. In the air, they're fighting us over the Black Sea. Oh, good, right, yes. Um, <laughs> we need to help Turkey. I think what we do is similar to last time. We let Turkey try and hold their own for a bit, and then we move in and help them once we feel things have stabilized here. Because even if Turkey gets pushed back to here, we can easily break out and retake Turkey. There'll be great encirclement potential inside Turkey itself. Um, whether it's the Allies or the Axis that hold it. Oh, goodness gracious. I completely forgot. I completely forgot about this. Um, problem. Yeah, so all this area, of course, is about to go to war with us. Because it's in the Allies. So, I'm going to move some of my men, some of my puppets' divisions, out of these port defences and into uh, into a more aggressive stance here. Okay. They get no general bonuses, because I intend this army to be much larger than 20, but they still, I believe, get the full bonuses from Rungstead being a field marshal of this whole area. Uh, so we'll take just kind of the occasional guy and send them down here. We saw very little resistance from the Allies in the previous... African campaign, I suppose we will just hope that we see a similar display from them this time. And given that we're doing this, yeah, let's also take some men and use them to um, to, to help out Turkey from these port defences. Where we see places where there's three, that does seem excessive. So let's grab, well, it's really not excessive because some of these templates the AI are using. You know, I haven't vetted each template. I'm sure some of them suck. We have put the Romanian elite guys holding Rome, by the way. I just like that idea. They're, they're making sure the Pope doesn't cause problems. <laughs> that works for me. Alright, you three. Let's put you here, because if we can cut off the allies from the south, 
That'll do more work for Turkey than putting a couple of divisions up here would, really. So, situation up here. Relatively stable. We'll just cycle this guy in and out. Uh, let him get some org back. That's fine. Let's make him go a bit further away before he comes back. Nice. Okay, so absolutely extensive conscription, no doubt in my mind. Uh, we will have import problems because we're about, we're, you know, we've been trying to import from the US. We built loads of infrastructure, by the way, this campaign. Bit of a patchwork. You can probably guess why it's so patchworky. It's where all the resources are. We've got a lot of forts going up. Level 3 fort wall on the allies is complete. Level 3 fort wall on the uh, common turn is... Oh, sorry, not quite complete, but almost complete. And level 3 on the uh, common turn is almost done. We are at war, which is hurting our stability. We might want to do some uh, improved work conditions at some point. But it's, it's quite a long play for, for this early in a conflict, so I don't think we're going to do that just yet. Alright, all our tanks in the south now deployed. Let's pull some out of this region and uh, use them as additional support in the south because this seems to be stabilizing. Here's where we're seeing the main thrust of the Soviet attacks. And given that, we should really... Why do I have men in the north? What, what am I doing? <laughs> There's nothing in this air zone that you're fighting in, Christo. All right, let's move these guys. <laughs> Good lord. Um, that's, 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 let's call it questionable, because questionable sounds better than monumentally stupid. All right, get everyone over the freaking Balkans. Get out of here, Romania. I know it's your airbase, but seriously, you should not have men deployed here. If we could move the border forward one little tick, we could get another 600 planes deployed. That is a worthy and a noble goal. Let's see what we can do to capture this province. So we can get that airbase. We could build more airbases, of course, but I think forts for now are the right play. Okay, there goes a Soviet sub, the destroyer. We lost a bunch of planes. Have you got any more? They're not actually crushing. What the heck's going on here? They've abandoned the finish front because they're so desperately trying to hold back from us. They've probably fallen back to a defensive line or something. Excellent. Well, if the Finns can uh, cause some havoc, there's some, you know, sizable numbers of factories in these regions that they're, uh, they're retaking. So that's excellent news. Unfulfilled imports, eh? Well, as long as we can, we'll continue importing. Cannot deploy because of manpower, I assume. How many freaking manpower do you take? More than 8,000? My god, 10,000 service manpower. That is freaking outrageous. Okay, get in get in there. This is, uh, this is a dangerous, dangerous situation down here. In fact, it's so dangerous, and it seems so secure in the north. I'm going to move some of the northern light panzers. I'm actually going to steal some from here as well, under Manstein, and we'll bring them down as a response force. They are light, and they are also uh, going to be undersupplied quite rapidly, because my light panzer production is almost non-existent. Uh, we're making, you know, two a day, not bad. And we do have a stockpile of 600, but basically, as those light tanks fail to produce the numbers required to replenish themselves at the kind of rate at which they're being destroyed, we're just going to get rid of them, basically. Which of these two lines do we move? I think it's this one. And there are our extra 600 plane slots, which we will put, I think, all towards getting fighters over this region. You, what are you doing, sir? And we do not want you attacking enemy cast, I don't think. Well, there are, there are a lot of them. We could also build some anti-air, of course. That is, uh, it is an option. Hmm. I'm not sure about that, though. We should probably keep trying to intercept their bombers because there's, there's a lot of them. Yeah, so this is a, this is a stronger push than we saw last time. We must have had a better defense here last time. I, uh, I have more manpower issues this time. I think. We should probably start rush deploying some of these guys. Oh yes, especially these guys. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, have, uh, let's have both of you. They're fully equipped, just under-supplied. It's fine. Get, get in there. 
Okay, this is such a unified region at this point in terms of, you know, we're just defending all four of these. What I think I will do is switch it to an attack plan on that region so we can get that lovely attack bonus as and when we need it. Okay, you guys get your butts over here. You guys should be strat redeploying. Where are my, where are my tanks at? They're here. That's just inconvenient. Get, get out of there. Get down here. Get down here pronto. Oh, hello. Okay, they've reached us here. One of you's going to have to stay behind. That's not good. Um, right, they're fighting us over Poland now. A bit more. So let's move some more of these guys over here. Because we seem to be holding okay down here. Gosh, this is, uh, this is tough. It's tough. Um, we will see. We'll see if we can hold out. I think we should be able to. I mean, we did last time, right? So, we really should be able to. Now, where are those infantry? Did I not rush to deploy them? I didn't, indeed. Uh, more manpower coming through, which we'll put straight into more guys. Actually, I should probably put it into more planes. Where do I actually have slots? Oh, that's only a 200 airbase? Foolish. Foolish of me. To overstack that. Let's send them over here. And we can actually fit another 400 fighters in here. So let's do precisely that. And send them in. We don't need men over Czechoslovakia right now. They're just not fighting over it. So let's fly them into Poland. We can have another 400 fighters here. Again. So let's do that. Um, these naval bombers are no longer really necessary. Let's prime them for doing some kind of hit and run tactics on the uh, on the British fleet. And instead, oh, these transports will be useful when we start having supply issues, but not sooner. So let's move them down to Munich so they're out of the way. And meanwhile, let's get all the rest of our fighters that we can in here. Looking good. Again, you guys get over Poland. That will free us up. Maybe to move some guys further east. We'll see. From here, we can absolutely fly a bunch of CAS. Where is my CAS 2? Like, why is where, why is my CAS 2 not? Is that CAS 1? No, it's CAS 2. So where the heck's my CAS 2? Give me a second. Well, where is, I'm just going to find my CAS 2 before I go to dinner. <laughs> where is it gone? Cas two. Oh, it's it's. I'm a fool. It's just all automatically being deployed to replace the Cas one that's already in the field. Actually, dumb enough for that. There we go. And um, we can just do like one more. There we go. Where did I put it? Here. Good. Reduce that by ten. Good. It's uh, the reason no Cas twos are showing up is because uh, they are replacing the Cas one automatically. All right, another 1,000 to 200 cas in that region is going to make a big difference to those Soviet pushes. We'll obviously split them up into their hundreds once they deploy. Okay, well, I'm going to end the episode here. The Soviets have pushed to the front. The front is... Ooh, it's straining, but thus far we haven't lost a tile, which is extremely, extremely rewarding. Our Turkish allies have actually gained ground, although they have been pocketed for their troubles. And of course, we haven't had to worry about the war on two fronts, but we will very shortly in the next episode. Until then, thank you ever so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, do hit the like button. It helps out a great deal, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.